Hi everybody, this is Ryan Farley from Customer Effects. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a development environment to do customizations to the SalesLogix mobile product. In SalesLogix Application Architect, it, I have the bundle already installed for mobile. This isn't where we're going to do any of the customization at all. This, the bundled version of the mobile product is a little bit different than what we're going to work with to customize it. So in order to customize it, we do need to set up a separate development environment. We'll do our changes there, we can test them, and then package things up and put them into application architect and deploy them. Uh, in this video, we're going to focus on that first step of setting up the development environment. To do that and make the job a little bit easier, I'm going to use a tool called the Mobile Developer Toolkit. This product is a free product from customer effects. Anyone can use, it's open source. Uh, to get that, you go to customereffects.com, click on Power to Software, and then go to the SalesLogix Mobile Developer Toolkit link. And click on the link to install. When the installer opens up, I can just click Install, and it'll install it on my machine. This is a pretty lightweight utility that just automates some of the tasks when you're working with SalesLogix Mobile. We're going to, in this video, only focus on this task right here to create a development environment. So I'm going to click that, and I need to choose which version of mobile I'm working with. Just as a tip, if you're not sure, uh, you can look at either the deployed mobile site or in Application Architect and look for a file called index.html and open that up. If you see the word Dojo in it anywhere, then you're working with mobile 2.0. Mobile 1.2 won't say the word Dojo anywhere in this file, but it will say the word ext in several places. So since I do see the word Dojo, I'm working with mobile 2.0. And that's what I'm going to choose here for my version I want to set up. And then I can select where I want to put that. Uh, the mobile developer toolkit does come with a packaged web server and I could use that and just put it anywhere I want to if I wanted to put it on the desktop for example. I'm going to put it under IIS so it sits right next to the deployed production version of SalesLogix Mobile. So I see SLX Mobile there and I'm going to name mine SLX Mobile Dev. So now I have my path and then I'm working with mobile 2.0 and I'll click the button to create dev environment. And right now the mobile toolkit is going out to GitHub and downloading all the source files and setting up this development environment for us to use. All right, that is now done. Let's go take a look at what it did. I'm going to close out the developer toolkit here. So here's my folder and I can look in there and I can see that uh, it put some things in there. Now I have open right here the deployed bundled version of SalesLogix Mobile. Now our path is SLX Mobile Dev. Now we need to put in a few other things into this path as well. If we go and look at this, we'll see that there's a folder called Products, Argo Sells Logics, and in there is an, our index.html or index-dev.html. Now we're going to use index-dev for everything for our purposes here. Um, and I have to include all that in my path, so I have to type Products, Argos sells logics and index dev.html. And now it's loaded up the development version of the, uh, the development environment that we've created. Now, a couple of things to point out here. If we go back over to this folder and look in the configuration, there's two files listed here. I'm going to open up both of them up. Now, the way that the production configuration works, in the at least in the development environment created by the mobile toolkit, is it's going to look for the whatever's in the browser URL when I access the mobile site. 
and use the same path to get to S data. So it's going to look for the same server name. It's going to look for the same port. Um, so as I go to, if this were production, it would look for, let's actually go to the production. Uh, that configuration that we're loading is based on the URL that we're entering here. So if I en enter index.html, it loads the production configuration. If I have the dash dev in there, it loads the development configuration. So if I load the index.html, something's happening a little bit differently here. And basically what's happened is it's trying to look for the same server name, for S data, same port, and kind of determine all that based on what I've entered in as my URL. Now the development one is it has this hard-coded URL to look for local host, S data, and so forth. So that's something to keep in mind. If if my S data portal is in some other location, I need to modify these configuration files so that they resolve correctly to the place where my S data is. Okay, so this is all the steps that are needed to, to set up a development environment. In our next video, we're going to look at how to actually make a customization, adding a custom field to Cells Logics and adding it into this environment. And then in a later video, we'll look at how to bring that full circle and put that customization back into application architects. We can bundle it and deploy it just as we normally would any Cells Logics portal. Hope this information was useful and I'll see you next time.